They're looking for something, and they found it. Well, why wouldn't they? It's university researchers, almost certainly, with an agenda. Here's the survey from 2016, or at least as reported by probably a not so good reporter, one who is not investigating the way she should, Sandhya Samashikar, reporting on April 4th that, quote, Researchers at the University of Virginia quizzed white medical students and residents to see how many believed inaccurate and at times, quote, fantastical differences about the two races. For example, that blacks have less sensitive nerve endings than whites, or that black people's blood coagulates more quickly. They found fully half thought at least one of the false statements was Possibly, probably, or definitely true. Now, this is not a condemnation because the word possibly is the realm of almost any good thinker. Unless all other options have been ruled out, which is very hard to do, anything is possible. Okay? This report is conflating three outcomes into one, the definitely true, the probably true, that means more than 50% chance, and the possibly true, which is a 1% chance or even 0.001%. It's anything but impossible. And the possibility of African Americans have something different in their blood is a possibility. We know that is true for different races, Tay-Sachs disease, and certain kinds of anemia that do affect races differently. So it is a very reasonable thing for medical students to say, possibly, it's pretty hard to rule it out without an exhaustive amount of research presented to you. And I'm sure this survey didn't give them that research beforehand. Maybe more importantly, why? did this survey only ask the question among white medical students and residents? I suspect if they included black medical students and residents, I bet the percentages would be just the same. They learn medicine in the same school and probably in the same way with the same capacities to reason. Why they excluded African Americans gives me a sense that the exclusion owed to bias of the surveyors. Wanting to find something, wanting to include the word possibly as a way to report what looks like a condemning race-based sense of American white med students when it's not. Let's apply this to a more prominent writer. Yes, my least favorite author, one Robin D'Angelo, because she cites this survey in White Fragility Chapter 4. And indeed, she's playing with statistics. I know why. It follows on the heels. Because, the why is because it supports her theory that America is race-based through and through. The previous page offers yet another survey, which... Ms. D'Angelo or her editors just whitewash, okay? Saying Heather Johnson and Thomas Shapiro, sociologists, surveyed white families who discussed consistently fear of crime and associated crime with fear of color. Then Robin goes and says, Research matching census data and police department crime statistics show that this association does not hold. Where's that data? I do not, if that existed, it would be round, it would be laughed at because every overlay, whether you take minute localities or widespread or even statewide, the correlation but not causation, but the correlation between higher crime rates and more minorities in the area is high. It doesn't mean 
that somebody making this statement is racist. It's an observation that is absolutely confirmable by facts. And the few pockets where the, it doesn't hold, okay? It actually helps prove the point. Go to Southern, Southwest New Hampshire. And generally low crime, very white, and the few pockets, a corner of Keene perhaps, are actually a fairly high percentage of non-whites. This doesn't go to saying that there is causation, but there is correlation and families perceive it. And to have some bland dismissal without any evidence is overlooking reality. My biggest criticism of chapter four is that Ms. D'Angelo or her editors or both are not grounded in reality.